confused person before you. He is a 19 year old, old student of Sunshine School. Currently a first year student of civil and structural engineering at the Technical University of Kenya. He is a Christian, a member of the university choir and Christian Union. <laughs> Having introduced the accused person, Your Honor, I'll address you to what the prosecution purports to be compelling reasons. And when as I address you, I want to go on record that our guiding document is the Constitution and that the cardinal consideration when issues of bond and bail are being conversed is whether the accused person will be able to attend court or not. That is the primary cardinal consideration. The rest are secondary and tertiary considerations. They have not denied that he's a student. What they have said is that his only crime, he ran away to his mother's house. Did they expect a 19 year old to have a home? He is available. He will attend court dutifully as and when it is required. Your Honor, then the prosecution goes on a trajectory of wailing louder than the bereaved and saying that the accused will be insecure. Your Honor, it is settled law. And I will quote the dictum of Ouko J as he then was in Nicholas Kiptigay, Ngetich, and two others versus the Republic. Uh, the prosecution raised such issues, and while frowning at the issues, the court said, it is the duty of the state in terms of Article 29C of the Constitution to ensure the safety of all citizens. He goes further and says, it cannot be in the mouth of a state official, like the prosecution here today, charged with the duty to provide security to allege that a citizen, for whatever reasons, can be insecure. What they are inviting you, Your Honor, is that as you release here, the state is asking you to compel the police to ensure he's safe <coughs> and secure, to remind them of their personal duty. You know, the second issue is the issue of interference of witnesses. We are at pains to submit how a 19-year-old student will interfere with a 57-year-old police officer and the witnesses lined up by the police force with unlimited state machinery, including tools of violence. In any event, in Republic versus Dwight Sagari and others, High Court case number 61 of 2012, the High Court has this, had this to say. For the prosecution to succeed on the line of witness interference, it must bring before court cogent evidence of either real or perceived interference. Your Honor, whereas counsel are supposed to be well deep into the law, books of law, and the Kenya law reports, here is a prosecution that has taken a bit of time on social media and brings you a clip of one Mike Sonko. We do not want to discuss Mike Sonko 
in this court. But it is embarrassing to the state that the only material placed before you is an alleged conversation of Mike Kofi Sonko with the non-Kenyans without demonstrating their relationship with the accused person. That is why we strongly believe that it is part of the script by the National Police Service, aided by the prosecution, to concoct videos to come and convene this court that there is witness interference. Refuse that invitation, Your Honor. Your Honor, the prosecution has said that this offense is so serious, and my learned brother, Omari, has equally dramatized it in a very good manner by saying that when the accused person allegedly attacked the police officer, that he was attacking the crowd, that he had his cape on, that the uniform was blue, that he was beating Kenya. One of the questions that we should ask is this. When a police officer takes bribes, and there have been convictions of taking bribes, do they take bribes on behalf of the nation and the people of Kenya? When the police officer kills Willie Kimani, are they killing Willie Kimani on behalf of the people of Kenya? Your Honor, the same way the police commit crimes in their personal capacity, when it's alleged that they are beaten, it is individual police officers who are beaten and not the state. Your Honor, we submitted yesterday that the seriousness of the offense cannot be relied on by the state to deny bond. And we gave you the authorities. We do not wish to say more regarding those authorities. Very lastly, Your Honor, the state has demonstrated by way of submissions that even if you released the accused person, the police force will not be willing to protect you. <laughs> we wish to go on record as advocates of the accused person that what is alleged to have happened was a tragic comedy. It's called a tragic comedy in literature. And that the accused person in that play, if they are lying on social media, is the tragic hero. Refusing to pay a bribe. He has been dragged to court and is here with us. What will happen if you hand the accused person to the police officers who are in this courtroom in unprecedented numbers? Not even uh, charges of terrorism have attracted such a huge chunk of police officers. What will happen to this accused person? Your Honor, this court has the cardinal primary <coughs> responsibility of not just ensuring the liberty of the accused person, but also ensuring his security, whether he is in prison or out of prison. And what Odunga said that I must turn off with, Odunga said the decision that I have given of Nicholas Kipsigei, that it is absurd for the state to imagine that the only safe place for an accused person is prison. That was Odunga J as he then was lamenting at the state's submission that prison is safer than home. I rest my case, Your Honor.